start the recording again. Uh, should be kind of touch and go on questions two and three on practice one for, for that D unit. We should have some general understanding of kind of how to go about solving for equilibrium problems and what the process of equilibrium really means. Uh, if we don't, right, we're, we're going to work on that uh, an awful lot more today. So, so don't stress overly much if you're feeling like, you know, you don't really get that. Um, we're going to be working on it an awful lot today. So, and obviously the whole unit. So don't beat yourself up if you're, if you're feeling a little behind, hopefully we can get you caught up today. Um, last we left our brave chemists, we were talking about Hess's law. We just talked about kind of how to manipulate the equation. And when you manipulate the chemical equation, um, what happens to our formula. I, I hope you also note that I've uploaded almost every assignment that we're going to have in unit D. I didn't upload the labs, but every other assignment in unit D should be uploaded onto Google Classroom as well. I know that some of you guys were kind of looking for me to be a little bit more organized and you were absolutely right. My, you know, this organization is one of my personal flaws. So hopefully this helps. Um, I haven't put on a, a due date to a bunch of those assignments because who knows kind of what the pace is going to be. I was hoping we get at least to Hess's law yesterday. We almost got there, uh, but everything else should be up there. I will kind of change the due dates as time goes on so that Google Calendar will re reflect the actual due dates for those assignments. But I think I, I think you guys understand by this point in the class that uh, turning things in is not something I care terribly much about. I much prefer that you guys understand the chemistry than you understand kind of the nuts and bolts of how the education system works. Uh, it's, it's flawed in very many ways anyway. All right, so let's jump straight into it. We'll do a really quick review here. All right, we have this thing. It's called an equilibrium expression. Sorry, this side is called the equilibrium expression. It's also how, if we're not at equilibrium, we would call that a quotient. When we are at equilibrium, uh, Mr. T. Chase? I was just Mark back. absent. Oh, right. Sorry. I think it was because you were not in when I did attendance. Uh, sorry for interrupting. No, not, not no problem. Oh. Okay. Let me make sure that that took actually. Yeah, okay. All right, so we've got the equilibrium and that's the, the kind of where we're at in terms of when we hit a dynamic uh, backwards and forwards uh, between our product and reactant, right? When the reaction rate for those two uh, reactions is the same, not necessarily concentrations, not necessarily pressure, but when our reaction rates are equal, we stop making more product or more reactant depending on which direction that equilibrium is flowing. We also talked very briefly about what the equilibrium uh, constant represents, right? A really, really big equilibrium constant means that we're going to be making a bunch of product. A really, really small equilibrium product, uh, excuse me, uh, equilibrium con constant means we're gonna uh, make only a very little product in that reaction, right? So we can glean some information about a chemical reaction simply from the equilibrium constant. Um, then we talked about how we can manipulate the equation if we reverse it, then we inverse the equilibrium constant. Um, if we double it, then we square it, right? Due to the energetics of that reaction and, and the fact that these equilibrium constants are based on a standard Gibbs free energy uh, value. And lastly, uh, we, we started very briefly to talk about Hess's law and then we ran out of time. So let's start there, right? Hess's law is this idea that uh, another, I guess, lie that we've told you in chemistry up to this point, is that uh, we can write an equation out, right? And that's how that equation actually exists, right? Sometimes, however, when we have a reaction, uh, during that reaction, we make a chemical that we don't include in the chemical reaction, right? So what we're really creating here is this reaction, S. yields. Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll redo this. Does that make sense? 
where there's an intermediate, this guy right here, that actually exists, right? Sometimes it might be a colored, a colored compound. Sometimes it might be uh, a noxious compound. Sometimes it might be um, some change in energetics. But a lot of times, what we'll write is this equation down here. But what's actually happening is this entire reaction up here. Now, how do we go about forming this reaction? We can add them together just like you did in Algebra 2 with equations, right? Where if this were the equal sign, right, we can just add those two equations on top of each other. We eliminate any of these guys, right, which are not in the final product, but rather an intermediate step to go from our original reactants to our final product. Furthermore, if we do something like that and we create one of our initial reactants, we can simply cancel out that value and reduce that entire equation, right? This process of adding equations together is called Hess's law. Hess's law dictates that if we add these equations together, we can simplify it to represent it as this equation down here, even if in reality, that's not exactly what's happening. Does that make sense to everybody? Now, when we think about this, if instead of a, a straight up reaction, right, a, a single direction reaction, if this were an equilibrium, and if this were an equilibrium, we would end up generating this intermediate and then the intermediate would decompose into the original reactants and some of the intermediate would actually uh, continue the reaction onto our final products. And we would get this back and forth flow, but we would have different equilibrium constants for each of these sub reactions, right? And what do we do with those equilibrium constants in this case? So we know the K for, let, let's take these reactions as our examples, right? 4B plus C, 2A, and we have an uh, equilibrium constant of 0.5. Right here, we've got uh, 2B, C yields D. When I add these two together, right? What we will end up noting is that we end up generating some A, right here. Uh, oh, 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 no, never mind. This is what we want to do right here. We want to end up with this reaction here. Firstly, how would we go about this, right? Uh, the way that I approach it, and this isn't the same for me, but the way that I approach it is I look to my final reactant and I see what kind of reactants I need. In this case, I need 2A, right? That's the well, that's one of the reaction, reactants that I start with. The other reactants is a C, right? So 2A plus C yields 2D. So let's manipulate this equation. And to manipulate this equation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to say, if I start with A, how much B and C am I going to produce, right? When I reverse it, we know that we're going to take the inverse of my equilibrium constant. Right here, I want to end up with 2D and I have a C as a reactant. That means I'm going to have to take this whole reaction and double it. When we double a reaction, what do we do to its equilibrium constant? Square. Beautiful. Thank you, Caitlin. So here we have nine. Here we have the inverse of one half, which is two. So now we have the components to add this equation together algebraically, and let's cancel out those intermediates. In this case, one of the C's would be an intermediate. 4B would be an intermediate. And what I'm left with is 2A plus C yields 2D, which is exactly what I was looking for in the first place. All right now, what does that mean in terms of our equilibrium constant? When you add these together, just like when we add these together, the equilibrium constant will be actually multiplied together. So we end up with two times nine and our result will be 18. Questions or concerns about Hess's law? We're going to do an example, so. Okay, let's break out practice sheet D1 again. And we're going to take a look at question two on that practice sheet. Oh man, I meant for you guys not to see this part yet. There we go. 
wonder if I got my slides reversed. In question two, we're only given one equation. We're also given the equilibrium constant. And then we manipulate that equation. I want you guys to figure out what happens to the equilibrium constant as that equation is manipulated. Equilibrium constant is 261. And we reverse that reaction. What do we do to the equilibrium constant when we reverse the reaction? So our forward, oh, geez, that's still way big. So KEQ for the forward direction is equal to 261. K, that means KEQ for the backwards direction equals the inverse 261. How do we get from here to here? Looks like we divide the whole equation by two. When we divide by two, that means we take the square root. The square root of 261 ends up being 16.2. Let's further test your knowledge here. Questions or concerns about question two? All right, then, uh, then the next step of your understanding is to kind of try to figure out, are we favoring products or are we favoring reactants in these reactions? So in the first case, when we um, reverse that reaction, we end up with a significantly smaller K constant. What does that mean regarding the, the products versus the reactants? Um, you have more reactants than products. Beautiful. Yeah. Right. Though we may introduce these two together, right? We we far and away favor the reactants. So this is favoring the left side of that reaction with a very small k value. We're favoring the product side. Excuse me. We're favoring the reactant side of the reaction. How about down here? It's going to favor the right or the products. Hmm. Everybody agree with that? I would. That's a pretty big number. I think it certainly favors the products compared to this one. What about compared to our original reaction, though? Not compared to the original. I agree entirely. Right, and that just means that in terms of the energetics, it's going to it's going to be a slower process to generate, uh, and that makes sense too, right? Because we're going to have fewer moles of each of these, um, so we're going to make fewer moles of this in terms of the the equilibrium. It's going to uh, compared to the, the one molar reaction. I did switch those slides, dang it. Foolish me. All right, now let's take a look at question three. Question three requires you to do a little bit of work using Hess's law. Can I do that same thing? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna make this, make this really fat. There we go. Using the reactions above and their equilibrium constant, predict the equilibrium constant in pressure for the reaction. Oh, shoot, I've got to at least show you the reaction. There we go. Take a couple of minutes. Hess's law is kind of a weird thing to get used to.
Kevin, I can't tell if you turned your camera off or if you're just actually sitting that still. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm I'm looking at the questions. <laughs> you were you were sitting absurdly still, statuesque. Really? <laughs> so it was okay. Yeah. I guess I reached a very tranquil state when I'm thinking. <laughs> I like that. How are we doing on this? Kind of scribbled my way through it on that that uh, notability. If you want um, to I was able to get it, but I don't actually know how to reduce that like fraction like you did because I got the sixteen oh. over the two times the ten to the great, thirty. Great. But yeah, that's yeah, that's so close. <laughs> not very far in math. All right, so we're at 16 right over 2 uh, times 10 to the 30th, right? And 16 is secretly, no one knows, but it's secretly 8 times 2, <laughs> right? Those 2 will cancel out, so we end yeah. up with 8 over or divided by, right? Because we've got an exponent okay. in the numerator, we can just make that negative. And if we think about this in terms of like, you know, the mathematics, eight divided by 10 to the 30th is going to be, you know, 0 0.0 blah, 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 29 zeros. I'm not going to do that to you, right? Eight, which is the same thing. These two things are the same thing. You dig? Okay. Yep. Great. You got the chemistry, which is all I actually care about. The math, will, you'll get to the math. There it is in like a very, very much cleaned up version. Questions and concerns regarding Hess's law. All right, I've assigned you practice D2, which is
which is all about Hess's law and, and a good amount of practice in terms of Hess's law. So why don't you guys do that by Friday? That's the same day that your um, test corrections are due. So you know, don't don't let it sneak up on you. Can I move on? How are we feeling? Okay, so up to this point, I, I haven't really touched this. Um, uh, I haven't really got gotten to this, but it's it's not the end of the world. So we, we've talked about this once before. I want you guys to calculate the concentration of one uh, liter of water. Do you guys remember this from last unit where we were trying to do concentrations and it didn't make a lot of sense because it ends up being constant, right? It doesn't matter how much water you have if it's all water. Same is true for solids. Pure substances don't give us concentration. They don't give us pressures, right? So, so pressure is a little bit different. Gas is a little bit different. Um, so we, we, we can exclude that. But for solids and liquids, we don't include them in the equilibrium constant because they're always, always, always going to be the same, right? And regardless of how much you have, regardless of how much you make, it doesn't mean anything to include it in the equilibrium constant. In fact, it throws your equilibrium constant off by quite a lot if you include a pure substance in the reaction. So for let's say something like this reaction, A solid plus B gas yields C gas, right? It's, who knows what this reaction is, but maybe we're burning carbon or something like that. Right, so now we're left with carbon dioxide. What would the equilibrium expression be? The concentration of carbon here is constant. So we do not include it in the equilibrium expression. That means that this equilibrium expression is going to be pretty straightforward, right? We can represent it in concentration if we're talking about moles per liter, or we can talk about pressure. And again, when we're talking about Kp, always use atmospheres as your unit of measurement. So let's take a look at question four. This one I actually managed to get the slides in the right order. So take a look at question four. Write an equilibrium expression for each of these, just the equilibrium expression.
Toss me the thumbs up when you're done with that. Thumbs up when you're done. Nice. Nice. All right, let me walk you through my thought process real quick. Right, in this case, uh, you know, given that I tell you that it is a heterogeneous equilibria, that means we've got solids, we've got uh, liquids, we've got all kinds of stuff all, all kind of aggregated together. You know, in the first case, we've got carbonate and we got water. We've seen this reaction before, right? It decomposes almost immediately. Um, but in this case, we've got carbonic acid and a little bit of base that's made. The first thing I look at is this liquid right here. And again, because it is a pure substance and not a gas, we do not include it in our equilibrium constant. So that means we've got products over reactants. In this case, the information is given to us as aqueous. Right? We have no gaseous products. So we're going to represent this only with equilibrium constant C for concentration. Right, there's no stoichiometry here. This is a one to one to one to one to one. It means that my equilibrium expression looks like this. Second one is far more interesting. In the second one, we've got potassium uh, perchlorate and the decomposing into potassium chloride and water uh, and, and oxygen. So in this case, we've got a solid, right, a salt that is decomposing into a salt and producing a gas. So gaseous substances is the only one of these three things that we're going to include in our equilibrium uh, expression, right? We can represent this in two ways. We can represent it as concentration if we give moles per volume, or we can represent it as pressure if we give it in atmospheres. But oxygen is the only thing that we are going to include. The other two are pure substances, so we don't care. Right, their concentration or their pressure, well, there's no pressure, but their, their concentration is always going to be the same uh, based on their density. Uh, all right, then we have the stoichiometry of that oxygen. We make that our exponent, and we are done with this guy, right? Maybe even one of these guys. Maybe even one of these guys. No big deal. Questions or concerns about this? OK, moving on. Nope, I'm going to skip this. When we look at something like this here, right? So this is the, this, the third question in, in problem four. We've got zinc solid uh, being added to some acid, right? So, you know, maybe hydrochloric acid or something like that. And we end up with some kind of zinc um, ion in solution and we end up with a hydrogen gas. And we know that, that uh, the gas can be measured in either pressure or in concentration to make this easier on yourselves. And I don't think this is something that's going to come up in the AP. I haven't, I haven't ever experienced seeing this in the AP, but you know, for those of you guys that are in, inquisitive by nature, how would I go about solving this? The first thing I would do is ig ignore this guy, right? That solid absolutely eliminates this from my equilibrium expression. Then we can move on to products over reactants. So in this case, we've got zinc, two plus, the concentration of that, and I would, to make it easier on yourself, include hydrogen gas as concentration, right? All over the concentration of your uh, acid in the first place, squared, right? This square comes from the stoichiometric ratio here. Now, you can also, and with complete accuracy, also, uh, I just said also twice, you can describe this. Um, 
like this. And it would give you an equilibrium expression. Oops, I'm going to run out of space over here. Let me move this whole big, big guy over that way. Uh, EQ, because that's the only way we can accurately label this. You can absolutely give this as my equilibrium expression, and it would be accurate regardless of initial concentrations, regardless of, of, of change in concentration over time. That will be a constant, just like my concentration equilibrium constant would be a constant, right, given a standard temperature. Now, do people do that? Yes. Is it annoying? Yes. Do you do it? No, don't do it. Do this instead. Cool? Questions or concerns? Okay, now we're going to move on to how we can calculate equilibrium constants given um, an initial set of, of um, circumstance, right? Uh, an initial concentration of, of reactants or initial concentration of reactants and, and, and products combination, but something that's going to be um, not at equilibrium, moving toward equilibrium. Where will we find that equilibrium? That's what we're going to talk about now. Let's try to calculate. I don't know if I gave this to you on the practice sheet or not. I, I hope I did, but maybe I maybe I missed it. Let's try to calculate the equilibrium constant in pressure for the following equilibrium uh, quantities. So we have, in this case, uh, an initial concentration. So these are the quantities at equilibrium. How would I go about solving this? Well, we know that we're going to solve for Kp. That's what the question is asking us for. Right. Then I would set up my equilibrium expression. Here is my balanced equation. It is simplified given that my oxygen has a one in terms of the stoichiometric ratio. I'm going to have products over reactants. Right? So far, so good. Then I'm simply going to substitute those values in. So far, so good. Hmm. Is that math right? No. That makes more sense. Then, you know, 36 is secretly 3 times 12. Questions or concerns? Let me see if I did my math right. I did. Beautiful. Nothing? No questions? No concerns? Feel good? Okay, moving on. All right, so what if you're asked to calculate the computer not given the, the values when they're at equilibrium? Right, so they ask you to give it, um, but they tell you that the that the equilibrium exists when one of the components of the reaction is at a given concentration or pressure. Right, in this case, pressure. So in this case, we have ammonia. Um, we, we put it in a flask, and the partial pressure within that flask is three atmosphere. It's allowed to decompose into its natural elements. Right, that's hydrogen and nitrogen. Uh, and at equilibrium, the partial pressure of nitrogen specifically is uh, a quarter atmosphere. Now what? 
first and foremost, we know that we're going to have to write out a balanced equation for this, right? So the balanced equation in this case, we're going to have ammonia to start with. Right? We're going to have some equilibrium. Well, I guess I'll probably do it right. Why, why be lazy? Right. And then this guy, whoop. that's not bad. I'm not very good at that. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of this guy, and a little bit of this guy, and I think that's it. Now what? Well, now we have to see the relationship in terms of these quantities at equilibrium. Uh, what I'm saying is we need to find the equilibrium expression. Equilibrium expression uh, for this one is pretty straightforward. We've got products and we're doing atmospheres. So we've got this guy, this guy, all over this guy, right? Now what? And some of you guys are going to really uh, seriously dislike this, but I would encourage you strongly to then end up using a rice table. Why a rice table? Well, you can do it stoichiometrically, as I'm sure Kevin will, right? Um, you you can use your factor label. Some people just have a you know a hankering for for punishment. They're a glutton for for punishment and pain. Um, other people like to use short and I'm just messing with you. Um, you know, do what you please and, and whatever works for you. That's great. But for me, it's it's easier to kind of to see all of the elements working at the same time in the overall reaction than breaking them down stoichiometrically to individual uh, reactants because we're going to need to, right? In this case, we only have a couple of values. We know the initial concentration of our ammonia, right? We know the initial concentration of both our nitrogen and our hydrogen. The only other piece of information that we know is the pressure of our nitrogen at equilibrium. That means that this is going to be 0.25. We also can dictate our change. Here we have minus 2x. Here we have plus x, and here we have plus 3x. In order to solve for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this section here as my complete equation, where I've got 0 plus x equals 0.25. That means that x is equal to 0.25. I can then go back to my rice table. I'm going to change colors here because I'm fancy. I'm going to say that X will be represented by this beautiful deep red. Uh, unless that's brown. It looks pretty brown, actually. Maybe that's brown. This, whatever color this ends up being. So we end up with minus 2 times 0.25 equals 0.5. So we're minus 0.5 here, we have 2.5. Plus 3x, 3 times 0.25 equals 0.75. So we're at plus 0.75. 0 plus 0.75 is 0.75. Now we know the pressures of these values at equilibrium. Right? We know the pressure of our hydrogen. We know the pressure of our nitrogen. We know the pressure of our ammonia. With these three things, we can go back to our equilibrium expression here whoop, and plug these values in, 0 0.75, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 2.5. Those values are the values at equilibrium. You know, I don't know what the, the cube of 0.75 is. I don't know what the square of 2.5 is, and I, I just don't have the mental energy right now to figure that out. So hopefully you guys have a calculator at hand, or I can just move on to the next slide and I can tell you. What are we feeling? I know that we have struggled with rice tables in the past. Do we need clarification here? A 
Q K. Let's talk about percent remaining versus percent reacted. This is another one of those scenarios where we have to be really careful about the, the terminology that's used on, in the question, right? This is one of Mr. Rue's read the full question twice, right? So this is one of those scenarios where you have to be really mindful of what exactly they are asking. So you got to read really carefully in this exam. If there's anything I can encourage you to do for like the entire future of your academic career is read questions carefully. It's a real shame when someone gives an answer and it's just not quite the right answer. And I think we ran into a couple more of those situations on that last exam where they asked you, um, is it, uh, I don't remember exactly the wording, but it was like, can they do this thing to uh, increase the titration? And the answer was no, right? They couldn't use that particular thing, but a lot of people just gave me the math, didn't tell me no, they would mark you wrong. You did not answer the question, right? You got to answer the question in this case. Um, we have two different possible ways that they can ask it. They can ask how much uh, of something remains in the flask, or they can ask how much of something has reacted, right? And those are two different, very different qualities. So far, so good. So let's take a look at the, the, next, the next problem. Four moles of gaseous NO2 are placed in a one liter container, maintained at a constant temperature after equilibrium is damaged. It was found that 25% of the uh, nitrous dioxide remains after the dissociation of nitrous oxide and oxygen gas. Calculate the equilibrium constant Kc. So in this case, they're looking for Kc. That means that we have to do it in, in terms of molarity. Right, we're not doing this in terms of pressure, even though all three components are actually gases. 25% of the NO2 remains after disassociation. So what we are saying is if we were to set up our rice table, first thing we have to do is say NO2 produces NO plus O2. balance it here. I wish I'd given myself more space, but we'll just do it in this lower section here. Initial change end. That's how I'd set up my rice table. Our initial value is four zero zero. Our end result here. So this is minus two x. This is plus two x. This is plus x. We'd have to take one quarter. What does it say? Quarter remains. So four. Wow, what's I don't know what happened there. Four times 0. 0.75. No, 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 no. 0.25. One. Solve that way. But that same exact question might be asked. 75% of the NO2 has disassociated, right? That means 25% 20, of the uh, gas has decomposed into nitrous oxide and oxygen. Calculate that equilibrium concentration. this.
questions or concerns here? All right, rolling right along. Oh, I, I forgot to. We're not doing this. We had like a, we used to do like a cool little bead demonstration. I don't know what I'm going to do to substitute something in for that. I, I looked at Gizmos. It's not very good. I've looked at FET. It's not very good. I'll find something for you guys to kind of experience some simulated equilibrium somewhere. Um, but I'll, I'll keep my, my ear to the ground. I'll keep searching for that in my, in my downtime. Let's do, I think we've only got a couple left. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. So these are multiple choice questions that, you know, given that there are only two of them that I found that were halfway decent. Um, let's take a look and think about Q as compared to K. Right, so again, what we're talking about here are two values that are very similar. Q is when that reaction is still taking place. K is when that reaction has reached some dynamic equilibrium. So if we know the K value, we can compare whether or not we have to create more product or more reactant based on where our Q value is as, com as compared to our K value. All right, so in this case, um, oh shoot, let's, let's make up a number. Let's say that our Q value right now is, I don't remember what the question says, okay. Well, let's let's actually hmm. wish I could create another page here. I think I can. Okay. Let's say that we have some reaction. We make a, an equilibrium expression of this reaction. Right, and we say that that equilibrium expression is nine. What would it mean if our quotient was instead of being nine, was three? Our quotient is less than our K. Does this mean we have too much reactants or too much products? We need this number to increase, right? In order to do that, this number must go up. And as that number goes up, where does that come from? It comes from these guys. That means that these guys must go down. That means right now we have too many reactants, right? Our Q looks like this. Our reactants are still becoming products, right? Our quotient means that our reaction is still occurring. How far we were somewhere um, past the start, right? But we're not quite at the equilibrium yet. So if our Q is less than our K, then we need to shift left. Shifting left means we need to create more products. Hmm, that really messes my. My vision up. I don't, love, I don't love that. In, uh, you know, obviously as a consequence of that, if we had a Q of let's say 15 and our K was still nine, right? That means that we have too many products, right? We've swung too far to the right. We've made too many products. We have reactants, we've made them. We have very few reactants now becoming products. Now we need a bunch of products to go back to becoming reactants. 
that means we need to shift. Oops. Left. Wait a second. I think I messed this up. If we need to make products, we need to shift right. There, that makes more sense. There, now it's highlighted. If we have too many products, we need to shift to the left and make more reactants. Does that make sense to everybody? Sorry, I, I, I should have been on more on top of this one. And, and, you know, obviously this is based on that demo. What does it mean when K equals Q? Which way do we have to shift? Aren't we done? We wouldn't shift. Beautiful, right? Got me, Sander. I was trying to trick you, but you got me. Um, in this case, our Q is our equilibrium. We don't have to shift. We've already reached equilibrium, right? Q can equal a K, and in fact, Q always equals K when we are at equilibrium. Summed up nicely here. When K is greater than Q, shift to the right. K is less than Q, shift to the left. Feel good? Let's take a look at this last one and then we'll call it. All right, we got 10 minutes left here. At some point during the reaction at 100 degrees centigrade, the concentration of N2O4 is 0.12. The concentration of NO2 is 0.55. Is this reaction at equilibrium or do we need to shift in some direction? How do we go about solving this? Well, first thing that I would do is I would, um, we have a balanced equation here already. So I would write myself an equilibrium expression that is NO2 Again, we're given concentration here, so we're going to use brackets over N2O4. This is our, uh, hopefully I'll be able to gather some NO2 when I end up going into the lab and dissolving that brass. So I'll, I'll be able to show you this particular reaction back and forth. Both of these are toxic, so it's not probably not going to bring it home to the fam, but I'm hopefully going to show you these reactions soon. Um, we have NO2, we have N2O4 right now. Our N2O4 is 0.12 and our NO2 is 0.55. I would plug those values in here and see what my Q ends up being. So right now we're solving for a quotient. Might be equilibrium, we don't know, right? All we know is that this reaction has progressed to this point, now what happens? That's what the question is asking. So we end up with 0.55. Oh, geez, look at me with my parentheses. 0.55 squared over 0 0.12. I don't remember what those numbers end up being. So our Q ends up being approximately 2.5. Oh, wow, just in time. Our Q ends up being approximately 2.5. When compared to our KC, our Q is greater than our K, which means what? Shift to the left. Shift to the left. Beautiful work, Ezra. All right, we have too many products. We need to make reactants. We're going to shift to the left. Are there any questions or concerns about equilibrium, calculating equilibrium constants, rice tables, pressure versus concentration, any of those things? Okay, wait. Wait, so if Q is bigger, you need to shift to the left. And 
the left is the reactants, isn't it? Exactly right. Can you make more reactants? Or more products? Sorry, I missed that very. We need to make more reactants. Okay, I got it, I got it. Feels good to hear that. Any other questions? Okay, let's call it six minutes early. All right, happy Tuesday. I'll have my office hours tomorrow, hopefully at the same time, right, 10 to noon. Um, yeah, I think that's it. As a reminder, Friday, you have both practice due uh, two and also the test corrections for exam C due. See ya. Adios. Bye. Thank you. Yep. Later. See thank you. Hello. What's going on, Dawn? Angry. Hello. Um, Hello. I have, really quick, I have really quick question from presentation. Mm -hmm. Like only one part. Yeah. Okay. It's like um. Uh, it is about the like when you talk about solid and gas and aqua for mm -hmm. K K. Um, I kind of uh, not aqueous, liquid, liquid specifically. Liquid, right? Okay. <laughs> Where was that? Yeah. Did I go too far? No, here we are. Yeah, only the part. I I missed the part. I mean, I got it. <laughs> I I did so. <laughs> oh, you're done. You just needed to see it again. No, no, no. I, I just wanna um check like. Uh, I think it's from the, the uh, I forgot English. Hold on. <laughs> I'll practice problem. It is from practice problem. Like examples. I'm sorry, you got to say one more time. I'll go down to the practice problems. These? Oh, yeah, that one. Four number um, A and B. Mm -hmm. Like, so, so do you count only um, a Q for first one. The the in the first one, I would I would count only a Q. Let's say that we had the the next step of this of this progression. You know, we would end up making um some carbonate mm -hmm. and some CO two. Yeah. Right. Um. Oops. Sorry. Sorry. We end up making uh, CO two and uh, da, 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 da. it doesn't matter. I don't remember what it makes. Uh, carbon dioxide and whatever else the other thing is. Carbon, 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 something. Carbon monoxide, we'll say it doesn't matter. Let's say that there was a gas here as a product. I can't, my, my, I'm trying to do too many things at, at once. Um, let's say that we also make a carbon gas. I would also include this gas in my equilibrium expression. The only things that we don't include liquids Mm -hmm. Solids. So instead of liquid and solids, I can put in the equation together, right? So if if there, uh, I forgot word for AQ. Aqueous. Oh, uh, aqueous. If there are aqueous and gas at the same equation, I can put both of them in the K um, equation, right? Just like this. Here oh, we have an aqueous here. Oh, sorry. Just like this one, right here. We have aqueous and gas. Here would be my equilibrium expression, right? Aqueous, gas, aqueous, all three are in there. Okay. I think, yeah, that's the only part I was wondering. Great. Yeah, great. <laughs> All right, then I will talk to you again. I don't know, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. Who knows when? I, you know, well, life uh, is a mystery. Uh, if I'm up, I will be. I mean, I have to join because of the data.
So, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, we got to go over the data. Yeah. So, so I'll see you tomorrow morning or evening, it's, really, um, I guess. Really late at uh, night. I mean, it's about like start of the new day. So, I don't know. <laughs> Very early morning, then. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See you later. Have a great day. Bye, Dawn. You Bye. too, man. Oh. Hello. I called him yesterday. I left a message. Uh, nothing. I, I, I contacted um, the Olympiad specifically. Uh, they they have like a, a messaging service on their website. Uh, they haven't gotten back to me. So I just, I don't know what's going on. They're really, if I'm being frank, quite the disappointment. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. I, I really don't know because for a lot of competitions that I'm, I'm attending this year, it's uh, they either do it online or combine several states together, or they just you know cancel the competition.